Have you ever heard of silicon carbon batteries? Well, some say they're better than the ones powering your current device. Heck, they're even better than your new iPhone that probably doesn't even reach the usual 5,000 milliamp hour capacity. And that is only one of a few major advantages of this new tech that is slowly gaining traction in the market. So today's video is gonna be a short explainer about silicon carbon batteries and we'll talk about how they could be better than existing tech we have now specifically talking about lithium ion batteries. So without further ado, I'm Asa from Yugatech and let's get started. So what is a silicon carbon battery? You may have heard about it somewhere already as an abbreviation, SICA battery or SI slash C and otherwise labeled as silicon anode battery. Officially known as silicon carbon, it is a newer type of rechargeable battery that's already being used in some of the recent smartphones released this year. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. This is gonna be a very nerdy video, but I promise we won't be going into this deep science of how batteries work. And instead, we'll be keeping this video quite simple for you and me to understand. Most devices today, including your smartphones, smartwatches, laptops, etc., are powered by lithium ion batteries, which typically use graphite based anode. For reference, you can think of an anode as if it's a storage container for energy. Silicon carbon batteries does act the same way as lithium ion battery with all of the science behind it and all. But as you've already guessed, it uses silicon carbon anode instead. This makes it so that a smartphone, for example, can fit higher battery capacities without having to sacrifice a much thicker profile or thinner depending on which size you're going for. So who did it first? Well, apparently Honor is one of the first companies to integrate such a new type of rechargeable battery in the smartphone. The first being the 2023 Magic 5 Pro. However, it was only featured in the China version, which was unveiled a week after the global release. This is a great example because for the same measurement at 8.77 millimeters thick and weighing only 219 grams, the China version had a 7% increase in battery capacity at 5,450 milliamp hour. In comparison, the global version only had 5,100 milliamp hour. The difference is not much, but you get the general idea. Now, Honor is on its third generation of silicon carbon batteries with its latest products being the Honor 200 series, the Honor Magic 6 Pro, and of course, the Honor Magic V3. And all of them use the new silicon carbon batteries. Mind you, the foldable Honor Magic V3 managed to be considerably thinner than its rivals at 9.2 millimeters thin when folded while still having a battery of 5,150 milliamp hour. In comparison, the Galaxy Z Fold 6 measures 12.1 millimeters thick with only a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. And the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold is at 10.5 millimeters thick with 4,650 milliamp hour batteries. By the way, these are not sponsored posts, we're just giving out examples. Fortunately though, it's not just Honor that's just going into these new batteries. Other phone makers are following suit. In fact, the only competitor that is close to Honor's achievement is Xiaomi. The company recently availed the Mix Fold 4 that only measures 9.5 millimeters thick and still comes out with a 5,100 milliamp hour battery, which is also uses a silicon carbon unit. Then there's Huawei with its new Mate XT Ultimate, a tri-folding smartphone, perhaps an industry first, and it looks really cool because it just, you know, you'll see it on the screen. As you can expect, it also rocks a silicon carbon battery. While it measures 12.8 millimeters thick when folded, that's which is almost the size of the Galaxy Z Fold 6, the Mate XT Ultimate packs an impressive 5,600 milliamp hour unit. Other brands such as OnePlus, Oppo, and Vivo have also been developing smartphones with silicon carbon tech. Vivo seems to be the first among them with the Vivo V40 5G. And by the time you're watching this video, you can check out our review of that phone in the Yucatec website. It has a thickness of 7.58 millimeters and packs a 5,500 milliamp hour silicon carbon battery. Now that we know some of the smartphones powered by silicon carbon batteries, let's go into a bit more technical and discuss the pros and cons. In theory, thanks to the intrinsic properties of silicon, it has the major advantage of having up to 10 times more capacity than graphite anode. That's about 4,000 milliamps hour per gram as compared to graphite's 372 milliamp hours per gram. Another advantage is the high resistance to cold temperatures. Honor previously conducted a literal out-of-this-world test by launching the Magic 6 Pro into space. 
while playing a video on loop. The phone managed to survive a three-hour journey going into space and back to Earth without any issues despite the freezing temperatures, which was nearly negative 20 degrees Celsius. Best of all, the Magic 6 Pro was only down to 86% of battery percentage from 100% during the testing phase. Now, typically, lithium-ion batteries, when exposed to low or extremely low temperatures, the chemical reactions inside it begin to slow down. This leads to increased internal resistance to the point that they could lose half of their battery capacity. Furthermore, silicon carbon batteries might be better for the planet than the ones we use now because silicon is more abundant than any other materials used in batteries. This could potentially reduce the need for mining activities associated with cobalt and nickel, which often have negative environmental impacts and which is what some people are saying which is negative about lithium ion batteries. But of course, nothing is perfect. The first disadvantage of silicon carbon batteries is the swelling problem. Our report says that the additional lithium ion stored caused the silicon to expand by about 300% during charging as compared to graphite, that swells by around 10% only. Now, this happens with pure silicon only. Like I mentioned earlier, silicon carbon batteries work the same way as lithium ion batteries. To solve the expansion problem, what Honor supposedly did was to design a whole new chemical structure that combines graphite as a base and silicon in the anode. Now, Honor did not disclose any documentation as to how they designed their silicon carbon batteries. But the Google Patents document did mention that a silicon carbon composite anode for lithium ion batteries consists of silicon particles, carbon black, and you guess it, graphite. In a way, you could say that silicon carbon batteries are just mass lithium ion batteries. So now silicon itself in the planet isn't exactly rare, but it's usually mixed with other stuff like oxygen. That makes it trickier and more expensive to extract pure silicon. Plus, turning silicon into the right shape for batteries needs specialized techniques and equipment, which eventually adds to the overall price, making them a lot more expensive to use. Now, how about the battery life? Honor claimed in its testing that the Magic 6 Pro was down to only 86% from a full charge during its 3-hour journey in space. Now, Shumit consumes about 5% of battery per hour, and take note, that's in the midst of sub-zero temperatures that could last up to 17 hours more up there. Now, if you think about it, 17 hours in space, is it really true? Well, I'm happy to report that it is 100% true at least based on our experience with the Honor Magic 6 Pro. We previously took the Honor Magic 6 Pro for full review, which you can watch here or also the Ugetech website. And during our time with it, we got some superb battery life. In our video loop test, where we played a full HD 1080p video on loop at 50% brightness, audio muted and set to airplane mode, the phone lasted a bonkers 30 hours and 20 minutes of playback. As a matter of fact, if you scroll through YouTube, watching some battery tests comparing the Honor Magic 6 Pro to other flagship, it will likely be the last phone standing among them. But it's not just smartphones that can use these new silicon carbon batteries. Electric vehicles or EVs could also be blessed with wonders in the near future. As of now, there aren't that many commercially available electric vehicles that explicitly advertise the use of silicon carbon batteries. However, several automakers are actively investing and in developing this technology for future models. In 2022, Mercedes-Benz, in collaboration with Sila, announced that they are targeting to release G-Class EVs using silicon anode technologies in the coming years. Yes, your G-Wagon will be electric and it might be using silicon carbon batteries. Mercedes-Benz specifically mentioned that Sila's technology enables a 20 to 40 percent increase in energy density reaching more than 800 watts r per liter at cell level but aside from mercedes-benz in the same year porsche also invested a staggering 100 million us dollars in group 14 technology focusing on the development of silicon anode lithium ion batteries now this would be a significant step forward in improving battery performance in the range of their electric vehicles like the taycan and of course the upcoming macan ev now, those were announced in 2022, but so far, there have been no updates from both companies regarding these batteries. But seeing similar technology are now being used in smartphones, meaning it's not entirely impossible for electric cars to transition to newer battery technology as well. And even though I'm not personally the biggest fans of EVs, well, it sure is amazing. 
It's important to note that the adoption of silicon carbon batteries is still in its infancy to this very day. Sure, there are a few hurdles to jump over before they're everywhere, but with enough research, we should be seeing more of them in smartphones and not to mention electric cars very soon. More bar type and foldable phones can finally have larger batteries without sacrificing thin profiles. And who knows, maybe Apple could make use of this tech to give their iPhones a bit of boost in the battery capacity while still retaining their signature design language. The possibilities are surely feasible and it's just a matter of time whether these silicon carbon batteries go widespread or dead in a few years. So that about wraps up this explainer video on silicon carbon batteries. Will you agree that lithium ion is the old and silicon carbon is the new? Whatever the case, share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video or at least found it informative, do drop a like and subscribe to watch more. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. And of course, visit yugatech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Asaya, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.